So the Fighting Foxes are 0 and 4 to start the season. They're only one of two teams that have yet to win a game as the starting pitcher for today is going to be Sinker Baller. That's going to be their ace. This is going to be their best chance to hopefully win their first game against the Wardens. The Wardens, they just want to go for the sweep. And the notable players for the Wardens are Burton, Nunez, and Everdale. Burton with a 500 average and two home runs. Nunez with a 353 and two home runs. And Everdale with a 333 average and one home run. Adrian Black is going to be their starting pitcher. He is 0-0 zero zero with a 1.59 ERA and a 1.24 whip. And like I said before, Sinker Baller is going to be the starting pitcher for the Foxes. Sporting a 2.57 ERA and a 0.86 whip. The notable players for the Foxes are Ethan Johnson, 306 average and one home run. Alex Tyler, 312 average and one home run. And Magic Richardson with a 267 average. We did change the lineup for today's game. It's going to be Zach Chavins batting first, followed by Dan Owens, Magic Richardson. Brandon Soto, Alex Tyler, Austin Bostain, Ethan Johnson, Ari Montana is going to be batting DH today instead of Magic Richardson, who's going to be in center field for the first time, and Michael James all the way down to ninth. And that is going to be it for this pregame show. Stay tuned for the game. Welcome to an exciting game of baseball. We have the Wardens trying to go for the sweep on the Fighting Foxes as Sinker Baller is going to be pitching today. Let's get this game started, folks. First pitch of the game is going to drop in for a ball. 2-0 and to start the game. Ball is grounded to Soto, throws it across the diamond. Caught by Dan Owens, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Justice Burton coming up to that, one of their strongest hitters, batting a 500, and continues to have a hot bat as he hits this one into center field. Brinley Triffick, with a 222 average, had a home run in her last game. Baller throws a ball low in the zone. Ball two, a little questionable. Looked like it managed to curve in there. Ball three, pressure's already on for sinker baller. Strike one, great pitch in the outside corner of the plate. Ground ball, sinker baller gets it, throws it at first. The runner advances to second for Pablo Everdale, the cleanup hitter. Let's see if sinker baller can get out of the inning. Strike one right down the middle. Ball one looked a little bit too high. Ball two, another questionable call by the umpire. Strike two, 99 miles per hour. The corner of the zone, see if he can speed it up. This ball is aligned into right center field and that is going to split the outfielders. That is going to be an RBI double to start the game. First inning has not been very good for the Fighting Foxes. Strike one, 100 miles per hour on the inside corner of the zone. He's turning up the heat. 100 miles per hour again on the outside corner of the plate. And strike three, only giving up one run. Let's see what the Foxes can do. Let's see if they can take that run back as Zach Chavins is the new number one batter for the team. We have a lineup change. He's currently locked in right now. One and one. Two and one, good eye. This ball is grounded foul. Two and two. Strike three, Zach Chavins. Probably not used to being the number one hitter right now. Strikes out in his first at bat. Adrian Black is the pitcher for the Wardens today, sporting a 1.5 ERA with a 1.17 whip as this ball is grounded to first base for the easy out. Magic Richardson, third batter. 
ball one. 2-0. This ball is hit foul. Strike two on the bottom half of the plate did not look like a strike. Magic does not look happy about that call as he swings and just walks back, putting his head down. Not very happy with the ump today. Umpire making a lot of questionable calls, not in favor of the Foxes. First pitch, that's going to be in for a ball. Probably would have been a strike against the Foxes as that's a strike, one and one. This ball's popped up. Who's going to get it? They're all kind of converging on each other. And the shortstop, Zach Chauvin's, will be making the play as Campbell's up to bat. This ball is grounded to the shortstop. Zach Chauvin's makes the play. Two outs. McFarland sporting a 143 average with one RBI. Ball one on the outside corner. Looked down the middle to me. That's a strike. And that will be hit past the pitcher for a two-out single in the top of the second. Pikel up to the plate. Strike one. Definitely was a low pitch, but he'll take that strike. Ball one, a little bit high. Ball two, check swing. Ball's grounded to Michael James. That's his first time playing second base in the season. As that will be the third out of the inning. We have the four, five, and six batters coming up, starting with Brandon Soto. Currently has a 250 batting average. Takes a strike down the middle. Foul ball. Ball on the outside corner. Looked like a good curve ball. Two and two. He's working his way into account. Brandon Soto probably has one of the better eyes on the team when it comes to taking walks. As this ball is lightly tapped to the shortstop. And that will be out number one as Alex Tyler, who has been locked in lately, is up to bat. Hits this one foul. Takes a strike slider. Throws that slider again, ground at the third, and that will be the second out of the inning as Austin Bostain is up to bat. He used to be the starting batter for the team, but he got bumped down after some poor performance from the past couple games. That will be the third out of the inning. So no hits, and they don't score anything as the Wardens are coming up to bat. Foul ball, out of play. It's a ball in the inside corner of the plate. This ball is popped up. Shortstop Zach is going to go get it. And Zach Chauvin catches the ball. Easy fly out. Justice Burton, one of the better players on the team. Probably the best player on their team at the moment. Hits this one as the second baseman makes the diving play. But Michael James might be feeling a little bit uncomfortable playing that position. He's normally in center field. Tries to make the diving play, but cannot get it. Good attempt, though, as now there's a runner on first. Runner stealing, throws it a second, and he is safe. Two and one. Three and one. Normally, sinker baller is pretty composed in these situations. And that's exactly why they pay him the big bucks. In a situation like that, he gets the pop fly. Now let's see if he can get out of the inning with no damage whatsoever. That's a ball in the inside corner of the plate. He's trying to throw that curve ball in there. It's not really working in his favor. Throws a 100 mile per hour fastball. Probably going to just try to go for the walk. You don't really want to do exactly that. Give him a pitch inside the zone as Richardson does not have a strong enough arm. And that's going to be another RBI. You don't know why do you pitch to the guy when the count's already 3-0. and You don't want to give him a pitch he can hit. Probably should have just took the walk. But he was confident in his abilities. And in this situation, it did not work in his favor as the count is 2-1 and one to Karaboki. 
three and one. Sinker baller not looking like the ace right now. This ball has popped up to the right fielder near the warning track as Bostain catches it as the Wardens score another run on a couple hits. And the Fighting Foxes are coming to bat. Ethan Johnson with a 308 average takes a strike. Grounds this one past the shortstop, and that's going to be a leadoff single to start the bottom of the third inning as Ari Montana, this is going to be his first at bat. Let's see what he can do in a situation like this. He has power against left handed pitching. That's why they decided to put him in the lineup. He tries to get it past the third baseman. He's not fast enough and hits into a double play. You can't make this up, folks. The Fighting Foxes are probably the double play kings currently in the league. It's one of their favorite things to hit into. Reminds me of another team that I know that constantly hit into double plays, and that's going to be popped up to the center fielder. And that will be the third out of the inning as the Fighting Foxes waste another leadoff base runner. 2-0, top of the fourth inning. That's a ball. Strike, 87 mile per hour changeup. He's trying to throw that curve ball. It hasn't been working for him today. He needs to just stick to the fastball and change up as that curveball tries to throw the fastball. Really looks like nothing's working for him. They believe that's his third walk of the day. Fastball right down the middle. Another fastball, 100 miles per hour. See if he can get the strike out here. Gets the ground ball. Soto tosses it to Michael James. Michael James tosses it to Dan Owens. And that is going to be a double play. What a great play. Brandon Soto getting the ball and tossing it to second. Great arm. That's a ball on the inside corner of the plate. It's another ball on the outside. Strike one. Two and one. Ball three. A very questionable call. Sinker baller not looking happy with the ump. Called that a ball. Looks down the middle to me. I don't know about that one. As Peichel, 0 for 1 on the day, up to bat. Swinging at the first pitch. Ball one. Right on the plate. Popped foul and out of play. 1 and 2 count. Gets the strikeout, 101 miles per hour in the center of the plate as the Foxes have the one, two, and three batters coming up. Chavins takes a strike. Slider on the outside corner. This ball's gonna be popped up to the center fielder as Nunez makes the play. Dan Owens, the first baseman. Pops this one up, swinging at the first pitch. Burton makes the play. It's another thing with this Foxes team. We have some players that are really patient at the plate. Some players who just want to swing at the first pitch. That's a strike. Two strikes to Magic Richardson. As Magic Richardson strikes out. I believe that is his second strikeout of the game as the Wardens still lead 2-0. The fan base for the Foxes, all they want is a win. They just want to get it started. They just want to get the win train started to get something rolling. If they lose today's game, they will be swept by the first two teams that they played against is not how you want to start the season. You don't, want to, you don't want to get swept by two teams. And the next team that they actually play is undefeated at the moment. So it's not... Oh, that's another hit. I believe he is 3-for-3 three three on the day. But anyway, the next team that the Foxes play, they are currently undefeated. I believe when I checked the record, they were 5-0. and oh. So that's not the team you want to go against when you're going to get swept twice. That's for sure. 
Fastball is grounded. Can they turn two? Nope. He decides he wants to throw it at first base instead. As we have Pablo Everdale here with another situation with a runner on second. He has both of the RBIs as sinker baller wants to pitch to him. The only person. And there he goes again. This ball is high and deep and out of here. Why does sinker baller continue to pitch to this man? He's clearly on fire. He's clearly had all the RBIs in the game. You have an open base at first, and you continue to throw him fastballs and curveballs right down the middle, knowing he's been hitting everything you've been throwing. Very confusing. I would have walked him. This it probably wouldn't have scored anything because Karaboki hasn't been really hitting the ball either. I believe she walked. See what he can do here. Three and one. It was a strike. Nice little change up. It's popped up and out of play. And that's ball four. He's not looking very composed right now. First pitch. That's going to be a ball. Foul ball. And that's going to be lined into left field as the inning continues and the woes of the Fighting Foxes keep on going. The number seven hitter up to bat. She hits this one high and deep. Does it have enough? Does it have the distance at the wall? It's out of here. Two home runs. Given up in the inning, and I think the fans are leaving the stadium already as it, it's only the top of the fifth. And you can see the stadium, people are walking out. Fighting Foxes fans are just not happy with the performance right now of an ace. Seven runs given up as Adrian Black has only had 36 pitches, three strikeouts, and only one hit. His ERA dropped to a sub-1. It's currently a 0 0.93. Let's see what the Foxes can do. Maybe they can get a couple runs, or they can swing at the first pitch and pop it out to first base. Alex Tyler up to bat. Takes a ball in the inside corner. That... Looked like a ball on the outside corner. This ump is not very consistent at the plate today. He called that a ball now, but he also called that a strike a second ago. This ball is hit into center field. Good piece of hitting as Austin Bostain is up to bat. Runner on first. One out, bottom of the fifth inning. Ball inside. Ball two, two and zero. Oh. Strike one right down the middle. It just seems the pitches that are down the middle, the Foxes just don't swing at those. They swing at the ones that are outside the zone or too high or too low, and they ground into these double plays as Boston takes the walk. Ethan Johnson has been locked in. See what he can do here. Pops this one up. Once again, swinging at the first pitch. Runner's tagging the third base. And he will make it in there. Ari Montana. Hit into a double play. Does have the power against the left-handed pitching. Let's see if he can activate it here. And he does not get it past the second baseman. My goodness. How did the second baseman manage to catch that one? As the Foxes continue to get shut out. And they decide they want to just keep Sinker Baller in there. They figured there's no point in even adding a reliever or putting in a reliever. And the game looks as good as over. But you never know. In baseball, anything can happen. In the last game they played, they almost came back from a crazy deficit. So maybe it can happen again with how they've been batting today. I doubt it. And they do indeed take out Sinker Baller and add in Dino Wink. 
It's exactly what I was predicting in today's game. And that's a 2-0 and count. Dino Wink, not the most accurate relief pitcher on the team. Surprised they didn't put in Miguel Almondo, but they do like Dino Wink. And that's going to be a great catch by Zach Chavins. Nice little jumping catch to the shortstop. Justice Burton, he is on fire at the moment. Don't know if you want to pitch to the guy, but sometimes you just have to get through the hard part of the order. He cracks this one to center field. And that will be caught by Magic Richardson, making it look easy in center field. This is his first game playing in center field. He's normally the DH. That was a good catch by him. As Michael James, 0 for 1 on the day, definitely has been the most disappointing player on the team thus far. Not sure if he will get benched anytime soon. The fan base is calling for him to get benched. Maybe he'll get a wake-up call as he takes a strike. 3 and 1. Hits this one to the second baseman. Justice Burton has been a pain in their side today. As Zach Chavins is up to bat, 0 for 2. Takes a strike right down the middle. Pops it foul. That's the problem with these Fighting Foxes. As you saw there, they swing at the pitches that are nowhere near the zone. But the pitch that comes right down the middle, they decide they just want to stare at it. And Adrian Black hasn't even been a crazy pitcher in the league, but he's looking like a Cy Young winner already. And that would be popped up. Foxes only have two hits and three innings to get something done. That's not how you want to end the series against this Wardens team. The mojo of the team is definitely going to diminish if you get shut out in the last game. Not only are you going to get shut out, but you're going to get swept. And then not only are you going to get swept, but you're going to play against a team that's currently undefeated in your next series. So I don't even know what's going through the minds of the team as this ball is just hammered. Don't even need to say anything. That ball is out of here. Nine, nothing, Wardens. This ball goes 471 feet. Pete Everdale, that's his third home run and his eighth RBI of the season. Like I say, I don't even know why they even pitch to the guy. He's been the best player. He's had basically all the RBIs on the, on, on the team today. And they continue to throw him pitches right down the middle. He's on fire. What do you expect is going to happen? You put in Dino Wink. He's currently not the best reliever. You don't put in Almondo. You know, as the announcer for this team, it's kind of frustrating watching them. You know, all they do is walk batters. They, they, they're not very good defensively. I just think they need a click. They need to get something together. I don't know if somebody needs to get fired. I don't know if somebody needs to get benched. I don't know if the best player needs to be let go to send a message. But right now, this this sort of baseball right now is just inexcusable. As that's another walk. Talking about Dino. As he needs to get replaced right now. The manager isn't a doing a very good job right now. As Cooper McPherson is actually going to be pitching. They once again don't put in Almondo. Very confusing. But I guess you're not going to put in your best reliever when you're already losing 9-0. Surprised they don't put in a position player as Michael James makes a nice diving catch. That will advance the runners to second and third. Sorry for the rant, sports fans. It's just, you know, I've been following this Fighting Foxes team, and I want nothing but the best for them. And when they perform like this, it's hard for them to even have fans to begin with. And when the manager makes very confusing plays and puts in confusing relief pitchers to come in instead of the better relief pitchers, you know, should the manager get fired? What's going on here? If he gets out of the inning, I guess that'd be okay, but it shouldn't even matter at this point when the score is already 9 to nothing. And that's going to be grounded to Dan Owens. And that'll be the third out of the inning as the Warden score two more. They have a total of 12 hits. All the Foxes have a total of two hits. Magic Richardson takes a curveball, or a slider actually, in the zone, one and one. Strike, that definitely did not look like a strike to me as Richardson strikes out. 
again. I believe that's his third strikeout of the day. Brandon Soto's 0 for 2 on the day. Strike one. Catch it dropping the ball. Foul ball. This ball has popped up to the right fielder. Looks like it's in the warning track and does not have the distance to get out of here as Alex Tyler is one for two on the day. Takes a strike. Grounded foul. Adrian Black is looking amazing today. Only giving up two hits. No runs. That's a bat crack. And that will be an out. So unsurprisingly, the Fighting Foxes do not get a hit in the inning. As the score is still 9 to nothing, as Skyla Nunez is up to bat. She's 0 for 4 on the day. Takes a strike. Ball off the plate. Another ball off the plate. Three and one. And that's a walk, ladies and gentlemen. Do they put in another relief pitcher or do they just leave him in there to get creamed? They decide to put in the closing pitcher. Strangely enough, I don't know why they would put the closing pitcher in, but that's what they decided they wanted to do as he's quickly 2-0, 3-0. Sorry to all the fans out there who are watching this game as he walks the first batter that he faces. And like I said before, I'm sorry to all the fans watching this game. You know, they, they grew up watching the Fighting Foxes. They enjoy being a fan of the Fighting Foxes and have to watch this horrific atrocity of a baseball team at the moment as the bases are loaded as Boston throws it home and does not get the out. Now will be the 10th run for the Wardens. Do you even throw it to Pablo Everdale? He has six RBIs on the day. Let's see what happens here. They're probably just going to intentionally walk him. Yeah, they're throwing it high. Yeah, it does not look like they want a piece of him at all. Oh, they threw him a strike there. Surprised he didn't go for it. And there's ball four. As the inning continues, this is the worst game for the Fighting Foxes so far. Pressure's on. Good slider. Throws a fastball outside. Ball two. Still no outs in the inning. This ball's lined, and that's going to be a good catch. Plow up to bat. One for two with a single and two walks. Is it high? It's deep. He jumps, and that is a grand slam. You can't make this up, folks. This is an actual baseball team. This is not a little league team. This is an actual baseball team losing 14 to zero. As Cole King's ER, as he plunks her, I don't know. That looked a little intentional to me after giving up a grand slam very very unprofessional by Cole King, upset that he can't pitch and decides he wants to plunk the batter as that's another hit. Cole King just cannot get anybody out. Sorry to anybody who has to watch this game. Peichel up to bat. Look at Cole King's ERA skyrocketing to a 40.5 ERA with a 6.0 whip. 6.0. I don't even believe he's had a strikeout in any game he's pitched. Not one. A closing pitcher with the inability to strike out batters. He's had more walks than strikeouts. As this ball is grounded, he can't even play defense right. He can't even play defense. A ground ball to Cole, and he can't even play defense properly, wasn't even hit hard, a little blooper, as they finally decide they want to bring in Miguel Almondo, put me out of this misery already, as that ball is hit, and the runner decides he wants to go home, and that's going to be another run scored, but that run is going to be put on Cole King, 
since he was one who put him on second base as Justice Burton's going to be batting. Takes a strike. Another ground ball. This is just an embarrassment. And that's a runner on third base. Everybody's hitting. It seems that everybody is just clicking for the Wardens today. Let's see if Miguel Almondo can keep that zero ERA. As this ball's popped up, I don't think it's going to go out of play. Brandon Soto at the wall. Bounces off the wall. Let's see if he can get the strikeout here. That ball's lined as Chavins gets the out at short. Just take a, take a look at the scorecard, folks. Just, just take a look at it. They scored seven in an inning. They scored seven. That's 2-0. This ball is grounded to the pitcher. Look, guys, a pitcher who knows how to field the ball when it's hit to him. Crazy, right? Ethan Johnson up to bat. Takes a strike. That's a 1-1 one one count. Wow. Amazing piece of hitting, guys. You're making this pitcher look like an all-star right now. What's his ERA? Currently a 0.68. I believe he started today's game with a 1.75 ERA. Something like that. That's a strike. And they take the walk. Michael James up to bat. Rounds this one. Pitcher just diving for it. That's the effort that I want to see from the Foxes. He didn't even have to dive for it. Beside, he wanted to do it anyway. Pablo Everdale, four for four. Six RBIs. This man has two home runs. Just completely demolishing this team today. He takes a strike. Can they finally get him out, or is he going to go five for five? No, they will finally get him out. This ball is it's a Soto. And that will be the last out of the inning. Or not the last out of the inning, the first out of the inning. My bad. This game has been going on for so long. And just by watching what this team has been doing, it's been hurting my head. Honestly. That's a strike. Almondo has been proven to be one of the better relievers on the team as he gets a 1-2-3 inning. Uh, very close out at first. Uh, it's still confusing as to why the manager does not put in Almondo earlier in the game. He has a zero ERA, has been proven to be one of the best relief pitchers on the team right now, yet they continue to not put him in. That's a one and one count to Chavins. Two and one. Three and one. And that'll be a walk. Dan Owens 0 for 3 on the day. He was the team's hottest hitter when the season started, finally cooling down. Takes a ball, 2 and 0. Adrian Black finally looking a bit tired. He's about to throw his 93rd pitch for a strike, 2 and 2 count. Ooh, very close. Slider, three and two. Fastball right down the middle. And that will be popped up. Two outs left to go for the Foxes. Magic Richardson, 0 for three. I believe he struck out in every at-bat. If he strikes out one more time, he'll get something called the Golden Sombrero awarded to him. That's a strike. I'm at a loss for words, folks. I am at a loss for words. Brandon Soto, also 0 for 3. They decide they want to finally take out Adrian Black. They don't let him pitch the complete game shutout for some reason. He only had one more out to go. I don't know if he got injured or anything like that, but he had to be taken out the game for Monty Parker. It's a 2-1 count to Brandon Soto. Ball 3. 
full count, and this is going to be the last strike of the game. So runner steals. Runners in motion. Hits this one. Hard, but foul. Yeah, that's going to be a walk. Alex Tyler, one for three in the day. This ball is aligned to the third baseman, and that will end the ball game, folks. The Wardens win this one. It was a clown show, 16 to 0. Not at all what anybody expected. Not what I expected at all, especially with a pitching performance by Sinker Baller. The ace of the team just completely having a meltdown, and then the relief pitchers doing absolutely nothing as well. But you can't just blame it on the pitching, even though the pitching was horrendous. The Fighting Foxes only had two hits, and one hit was by Tyler, and the other hit was by Johnson, and just the, f the first four batters, Chavins, Owens, Richardson, and Soto, just nothing. Just, they produced absolutely nothing today. Richardson moving up to the third spot with three strikeouts. You move him to batting order number three, and what he gives you in return is three strikeouts for being the third batter. Extremely disappointing. The manager has no idea what to do with this lineup anymore. Somebody's going to have to get benched. Somebody's going to have to get fired. I know there's still over 150-something games to go in the season, but when you start out the season getting swept twice, something has to be done. And it looks like I see Magic Richardson and Brian Soto going back to the dugout. So let me go talk to them really quick. Okay, Brandon, I see you walking back to the dugout. I'm going to make this one quick. Uh, what happened today? I, I don't even want to talk about it. It was, it was a horrible game, horrible offense. Horrible defense, horrible pitching. I'm sure that if we didn't have Almondo in our lineup, we would have we would have been probably lost by 20 runs. And you guys drop to 0 and 5 on the season, getting swept by the first two teams you play, and now the next team you're currently playing is undefeated. How do you guys feel playing against a team that's one of the best in the league? Well, you know, it's inexcusable how horrible we've been performing. And I'm not very confident in our next few games, but all we can do is try and see what happens. Is it a confidence thing? Is it a chemistry thing? Or what do you think is going on? I just think we're having... I don't think it has anything to do with confidence in the beginning of the season, but now it's probably starting to affect us. We just can't make contact with the ball, clearly only getting two hits. Our pitchers obviously cannot throw that ball in the strike zone. It, it's it's embarrassing. Well, thank you, Brandon, and good luck on your next game. Thank you. Okay, Magic Richardson, before you go back into the dugout, uh, just had a quick question for you. Uh, what, what, what happened today? Pitching didn't come to the, uh, the diamond today. Uh, we, we really lacked during uh, pitching. It, this game was so sad. I feel like after the fifth inning, our only goal was to score one run. Because after that uh, that shit state of a performance, I don't think we're coming back the, for this next series, considering the next team we're going against is undefeated. I was just about to ask that. Next team is undefeated. Are you guys feeling a little confident about that? Are you guys feeling bummed out about that? What what's what's the mindset in the dugout? Well, before this game, I was thinking, you know, maybe we're we're probably gonna lose to them. But after going 0-5 and getting sweet from all of the teams we played, I feel like what's gonna happen is it's gonna be one of those times where the worst team beats the good team one time and then, you know, we start losing again. So let's, our goal right now is to get that one win right now. Well, thank you for talking with me today, and I wish you guys the best of luck in your next game. And that will do it, folks. The Fighting Foxes lose this one 16-0, dropping their record to 0-5. Have a good night, everybody.